In today's video, I want to talk about a perfect audio interface for any home studio setup. Like you see me right now, I have a home studio setup that I have here. And one of the really important things that I have in this whole setup that connects everything together is my audio interface. And I want to talk about the things that you might want to look out for if you're looking for an audio interface. The, the make or the brand or the type of interface you want to get depends on these few things I'm going to list. And there's so many companies out there that are making different audio interfaces, but it's always up to you to do your own research and actually choose which one you think will work best for you. But let me know down below which one is your favorite company that makes audio interfaces or maybe the one that you're using right now. Okay, so first and foremost, the first thing that I want to talk about is the inputs, right? So when, when you're using audio audio interfaces, you want to make sure that you have two mic inputs. Like with mine, it has two mic inputs. If you look right here at the back here, there are two mic inputs. There's one and there's two. So I know that with Focusrite, Focusrite has audio interfaces that have, I think it has the solo that has the one input. It's a really cool audio interface, but I think that if you have a home studio, it's a good idea to have an audio interface that has two of them. Why I say that is because just in case the one dies, you have an extra. So that's why you might want to have two, because if you just have the one mic input and you're someone who records consistently, like what I'm doing right now, I'm actually recording my voice on my condenser mic going into Logic Pro using input number one right here, right? So if this one is to die, I know I have a second one, I have a spare. So you might want to make sure that the audio interface you're buying has two mic inputs. So that's something that you want to make sure that you do. And another thing that you also want to check before you buy your audio interface is the kind of outputs that are back here that connect your audio interface to your speakers, right? So you can see here, I have these two cables. I have this cable here and that cable. So these are going to my studio monitors, which are my Yamaha HS sevens. So amazing speakers, by the way, just to, just to point that out. So they have two and they are using these kinds of cables. So they are using these cables, right? These are quarter inch cables. So you just want to make sure that your audio interface has these quarter inch cables. Some audio interfaces have RCAs, but RCAs are noisy sometimes. Sometimes are noisy depending with the, with the speakers that you have. So I like having the quarter inch outputs out of my audio interface because it's less noisy. They are very quiet and the, the whole setup is quiet when you're working. So that's something you also just want to check out as well. Another thing you want to look at before you buy your audio interface is the build quality of the audio interface. So sometimes you actually want to look online and see what other people think about the build quality. Like how is it built? Like how is the audio interface built? Will it last long? Is it something that is, you know, feels like super plasticky? Like I know this Evo 4, if I'm being honest, it's not the best build quality of an audio interface you know because it, it, it feels kind of plasticky like if I press it it does bend a little bit so I have to be really careful with it of which I know some audio interfaces are really strong they are like metal and all of that which means they last longer so in case of any accident or anything happening the build quality is amazing and even the buttons as well like if you have any dials or buttons or anything like that you want to make sure that the switches will work well so the build quality is something that you also want to make sure you look into as well and just going back into the mics as well you also want to check the mic preamps how good they are how noisy they are because some audio interfaces are really noisy preamps and you don't want that you want the quietest preamps that you can get so that's something you also want to check out if you want to look for an audio interface but anyway I'm off mics I swear to God <laughs> another thing is also this one has one headphone out so usually when you get these kinds of in this budget these kinds of audio interfaces they normally have one headphone out of which for me personally I think just like the mics having two is always a good idea because if the one dies that's it. There's no other way to connect headphones. You understand? So having two is a good idea. There, there might be some audio interfaces that have two headphone outs, which is a good idea to just have that extra. Or some of them actually have a quarter inch and they also have another one that takes in like the smaller one. And I think that's also actually a good idea as well. So if you have two of them, that's actually a good idea. Or if you have two and maybe you just want to connect maybe two headphones 
playing at the same time that's also a good idea you also want to make sure that the audio interface can also power headphones that need a lot of juice when it comes to you know the impedance because these are 250 ohm headphones so they require a really good headphone output they require a lot of juice from the audio interface and this one works really well but if it's some other audio interfaces they might struggle to power these headphones so that's something that you might want to look at if you have high impedance headphones otherwise you might want to get headphones that have low impedance like maybe a 32 ohms or something like that but for me i love these 250 ohm headphones they are pretty cool they work pretty fine and they are quality i enjoy them i love how they are another thing is if your audio interface also has software like for me my audio interface has software that i use with it so it has the loop back software that you can see right here and then it also has like what is called the evo control so i can actually control the audio interface using software so i can just use my mouse to actually control the inputs and the outputs without even touching it so that's another thing you also want to check into if you're into that as well that's also pretty cool so that's something that's pretty cool so i can check my levels i can be seeing everything without even touching it so it can even be in a distance and i can still control it and everything so so that's something that i think you also want to look into if that's something that you want but if you just want to use your hands and touch everything then that's also okay that's that's not a problem but it's something that's cool but i can turn on phantom power i can like everything that is on this front face on this top face here i can control with just the software and it always has updates whenever they have updates so i can continue to update so having software is also a good idea if you have anything else that you look into before you buy an audio interface let me know down below to add to this list but these are the few things that i could think of that are really important to me when it comes to getting an audio interface and i know there are more expensive interfaces out there that other people that have but for some of us we are on a budget and we want simple stuff so this is my list to help you to have a bit of a guide before you buy your next audio interface let me know what kind of audio interface you're using down below and how it's working for you if you're gonna upgrade which one are you gonna upgrade to but anyway thank you so much for watching hit the thumbs up button and remember to subscribe down below i'll see you in my next video i'm x and i'm out peace